Uh, so uh, I was interested in mathematics from the, the early age, and my father encouraged me to do that. He was also a mathematician, but mostly was interested in education, and he became what is called candidate of pedagogical sciences, and actually his advisor was the famous probabilist Hinchin, but still it was in education. Uh, so I, probably he realized that I had some kind of mathematical talent from early age. I could multiply double digit numbers probably from uh, age seven or eight, and probably I still can do that. <laughs> And so, in, so I, I was in Moscow and starting about seventh grade, so I attended so-called mathematical circles for okay, maybe high school students and there was, I attended for oh, four, four years and uh, also participated in Olympiads, and I was probably quite successful in the 10th grade. I became, um, um, I got a first prize in so-called Republican Olympiad, and because of that I was, I became a member of a Soviet team, which consisted of eight people, and it was, International Olympiad, which was at that, e that time was in Czechoslovakia, in Chesky Budievice. And there well, I was kind of relatively successful, but not, I, I got one of the probably 12 sil silver medals. So, uh, okay, so now I am 76, so maybe I, now I can confess that from probably in high school and maybe in the beginning of uh, university, I tried to solve m many famous problems, including standard collection of Fermat Last Theorem for cover problems and etc. So usually, it probably attitude of somehow it was considered to be one of the way to become insane. <laughs> so I, I didn't, <laughs> and some again maybe in my case it maybe had some positive effects on how it's I developed the, okay some way to concentrate on difficult problems, but but certainly I would not recommend any young mathematician to follow my example. <laughs> So uh, after school, so I became a student in Moscow University in 1962, and I attended many seminars and probably too many in very different fields. So it's, but eventually I, uh, yeah, probably starting in the first year of my, my undergraduate studies, I, uh, yeah, I was in Dinkin seminar. Dinkin was kind of very, okay, famous probabilist, and, and I did my first walk in, when I was at the age of 19, and, uh, and probably it still have some influence. N now, but mostly uh, then I, I attended CNI seminars, so it was in dynamical systems, ergodic theory. Also, I was interested in probably rather opposite fields, some kind of algebraic groups, discrete subgroups of Lie groups. And so the, 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 there was quite well known problem was, was posed by Atlas Selberg and also Pitetsky Shapira about arithmeticity of discrete subgroups, so I don't want to get any exact formulation. And so there were two cases, was, uh, okay, case one, so-called non-uniform, and case two, uniform. For non-uniform, there was a strategy was developed by, was introduced by 
Selberg, Pizeski, Shapira, and then I started to, to okay, originally it was work with Kajdan and okay, so-called existence of unipotent elements, but uh, then it's for quite many years I followed the strategy and was eventually was uh, able to finish that. But uh, there was an another case, uniform case, where it's uh, somehow there was no strategy and then somehow I realized that it's possible to use ergodic theory for a problem which is formulated in uh, completely in arithmetic and geometric sense and to apply it to uh, do this case. And probably for most of uh, people in the field, which is in this algebraic uh, group, the discrete subgroups of Lie groups, it was quite unexpected. And actually, Dennis Sullivan told me when in 1974, Jack Titz told about my work, so uh, many famous people in this uh, league groups, algebraic groups, so how they somehow wanted to understand what a measurable function is. And somehow it was quite uh, unusual for them that. And uh, yeah, for probably it's in some sense it was uh, now maybe my most famous result and somehow it's be and m mostly because it combines uh, methods from uh, kind of opposite fields. Now I want to say that, so uh, after I, uh, I got my PhD, so I, maybe I, I didn't get a position which probably at that time was considered to be the best, but somehow it's, but it turned out that it was actually to my advantage. So I went to the Institute for Problems Information Transmission and there was some famous people, Sapinski, Dabrushin, who were interested in what is now called theoretical computer science and and probably also this I did there some work which is probably in theoretical computer science and mostly best known as explicit construction of expanders. So it's, maybe I can finish that. Yeah, in mathematics actually, also it's, actually it's a very beautiful subject, so it's, but probably to realize that you have to work very hard. And, and yeah, and so also it's, you should not be upset if you have some, maybe due to some circumstances, you didn't get the most at the moment when you didn't get that. So in, in my life somehow it happened that something when, when I was something very upset about actually turned out to be to my advantage. And so I, st I, I still was thinking about mathematics. And so it's okay, so that's all. Mm. Mm. Mm.